without having occupied Tibet, the Chinese Communist government has carried out a series of repressive and violent campaigns that have included democratic reform class struggle, communes, the cultural revolution, the imposition of martial law, the patriotic re-education, and the strike hard campaigns. These thrust Tibetans into such depths of suffering and hardship that they literally experience hell on earth. The immediate result of these campaigns was the death of hundreds of thousands of Tibetans. The lineage of the Buddha Dharma was severed. Thousands of religious and cultural centers, such as monasteries, nunneries, and temples, were raised to the ground. Historical buildings and monuments were demolished. Natural resources have been indiscriminately exploited. Today, Tibet's fragile environment has been polluted. Massive deforestation has been carried out, and wildlife such as wild yaks and Tibetan antelope are being driven to extinction. This has brought untold suffering and destruction to the land and people of Tibet. Tibetans in Tibet live in constant fear, and the Chinese authorities remain constantly suspicious to them. Today, the religion, culture, language, and identity which successive generations of Tibetans have considered more precious than their lives are near extinction. In short, the Tibetan people are regarded like criminals, deserving to be put to death. Since the re-establishment of contact in 2002, Tibetan government in exile have followed a policy of one official channel and one agenda, and have held eight rounds of talks with the Chinese authorities. As a consequence, memorandum of genuine autonomy for the Tibetan people was presented explaining how the conditions for national regional autonomy as set forth in the Chinese constitution would be met by the full implementation of its laws on autonomy. The Chinese insistence that Tibetans accept Tibet as having been a part of China since ancient times is not only inaccurate but also unreasonable. We cannot change the past, no matter whether it was good or bad. Distorting history for political purposes is incorrect. We need to look to the future and work for our mutual benefit. Tibetans are looking for a legitimate and meaningful autonomy, an arrangement that would enable Tibetans to live within the framework of the People's Republic in China. Looking back on 50 years in exile, we have witnessed many ups and downs. However, the fact that Tibet issue is alive and the international community is taking growing interest in it is indeed an achievement. Seen from this perspective, I have no doubt that the justice of Tibet's courts will prevail. It if we continue to tread the path of truth and non-violence. This was His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And now, from the statement of the Tibetan Parliament in exile on the 10th of December 2017. Since 2009, a total of 150 Tibetan people in Tibet, including the young, old and adults, men and women, monks and nuns, as well as lay people, have been driven to make a high sacrifice of giving up their precious lives by setting themselves on fire as an act of peaceful protest. What all these show is obvious to everyone 
The day resulted from the government of China's continued implementation of a hardline policy on Tibet whose consequence is the brutal violence of the human rights of the Tibetan people beyond all limits. With this perspective in view, we, one, we once again take this opportunity to emphatically remind the leaders of the People's Republic of China to bear full responsibility for this tragic situation in Tibet today. And finally, we supporters of Tibet, of Latvia, together with our Tibetan brothers and sisters, as well as all supporters of Tibet all over the world, pray that His Holiness the Dalai Lama may live a long life, seeing all his wishes fulfilled in a spontaneous manner, with peace and well-being prevailing among all the sentient beings of this planet and the just force of Tibet being seen, realized in all speediness. Long live His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We demand official China to observe the human rights in Tibet. Sarva Mangalam, Sarva Mangalam, Sarva Mangalam.